The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Hi, folks. Uh, let me just put this in the den. Also, the G slash C aspect. All right. So uh, we're looking at the Dow. I've got crude oil right here. Crude oil is up a dollar twenty. It's just uh, on the two hundred period exponential moving average. Let me just go through this since it's the end of the month. Uh, we can start looking at monthly charts right now. The Dow hit a high today of 35,725. 35,679 was the last high. So uh, we're looking at a new recovery high, and we've started a leg C in the monthly chart. All right, let's put it in right there. We can do it because it doesn't matter where it closes. Once it's gone above that, uh, you have to put in the notation. That's as simple as that. Uh, it could actually pull back uh, 100, 300, 500 points from this moment on at 10.07 on uh, Thursday morning of the 30th. doesn't matter. You've already reached that level to go to a leg C in the Chapman Way methodology. I had a one-to-one -one expansion right here in the weekly chart. I've been talking about that for a while. That said that there's a possibility that we could go in the single move to the upside, leg A, <clears throat> And what do I call the notation since we didn't take out the 31,429 starting point in the Dow um, the week of March, the, uh, March of 2023? Um, and now at this particular point, I've got a gray A. I have to change that now to a blue F slash A. Why is it an F? Because it's a continuation pattern that didn't take out the low of that peak E, even though there was a sell mode in place. The fact that it's gone high says I've got to be a little careful in my notation. It doesn't really do anything other than place it there to say be careful because F says you, you can have a bit of a pullback at any moment. A says are you kidding? Any pullback needs to be bought. If the stochastic, which is 80% right now, uh, this is a weekly chart tomorrow. If it closes over 80%, there's a much greater chance that this will become a brand new A, and that's really positive for the rest of the year. Um, and this is a leg D right now in the daily chap wave methodology. What you'd like to look for is a buy signal upgraded to a buy mode, which takes you to takes you to at least a peak D, uh, four higher peaks. And let me just do this quickly. Identify a low bar, get a buy signal, gets upgraded to a buy mode, implying that it should go to at least a D. It can go to E, F, and G. There's never an H. At D, other things can happen. We're at D in the Dow. We have made a D, and then we popped to an E yesterday in the S&P. Right there, but just a nominal high, and now it's kind of struggling. Um, and uh, it's trading down one at 45.49. The Dow was up 246, as I said in the update. Uh, CRM Salesforce was really a big influence. There are obviously other stocks. I'm just trying to have a quick look here. Uh, Goldman Sachs is moving. Ah, the brokers. Goldman Sachs is moving up nicely. Honeywell. Uh, Microsoft has pulled back. It had a spectacular move from the the lows, uh, and, and it hit the 380s, and now it's at 377, pulling back. But Salesforce in the Dow, also in the Dow, is helping a lot. So this is the S&P. Look at the QQQ. QQQ is down two at 387.72. There's a peak. Oh, I, might, I meant to do this. Within the context of measurements, a vertical measurement, if you look at this peak D right here, look how strong the MACD is, the moving average convergence divergence. Look how strong the stochastic is up at the 90 plus 91, I think it was 92% area. Let me just give you the exact number. The, um, right here, the S&P, the QQQ stochastic right there was at, ooh, can I find it? Yeah, it was at 90, the slow was at 95, the fast was at 93. So now it's at 83. So it's pulling back. Um, and the nine period moving average was expanding as being very strong. But wait a minute, look what happened in this one right here, yesterday's high. 
the MACD had already the nine period moving at nine period differential had started to move down. The stochastic was starting to move down. The on balance volume gave a signal to say that it's making slightly lower highs in an overbought situation. And therefore, it could start to pull back. And we've gone, here's the same thing that we've just done on the Dow. This is an E slash A, should be blue. Uh, right there, blue. Uh, um, meaning it's in a buy mode. But at the same time, we don't know if it's, well, it's 89% in the stochastic and the MACD is good. Nine's over the 14. There's a good chance it's an A. I, if there's a pullback in the uh, QQQ, in the uh, daily chart, 384 is at 387, the nine period moving average. 384 is the 14 period to really go negative. Nine period under the 14, you'd have to see the QQQs at about 376. At this point, I just, I'm going one step at a time. All I'm saying is, I'm looking at a disparity between the strength six days ago and the strength two days ago. The same with the S&P. Look, S&P, the strength here, very good. Um, and the strength here was not quite as good, still pretty good, but not as good. All right, in the S&P. All right, as we go on, I want to go to the IWM. We're going to ask the question, um, Will the IWM, the Russell 2000, in this particular environment, start to finally move away from the 200 period moving average resistance at 180 that it's at right now in the daily? Uh, 181 is the resistance in the weekly chart. If it can move in this period, let's just say there's a little bit of a pullback in some of the key indices, but the, the small caps hold well. And all of a sudden, you're looking at the IWM pushing towards the 183 area somewhere around here. And that's a leg B. I would start to say to you, you know, I think there could be a bit of a rotation. There's a broadening out of the market. We've seen that. ARKK is a good example. This is ARKK is the uh, ARK Innovation ETF. And a leg D yesterday was just a doji candle at about 48. Didn't it? 48 exact? I think it went just above it. 40, 48.02. And here it is at 46.73, pulling back just a little bit, down 16 uh, cents from yesterday's close. But there's the D, and there are so many stocks. I mean, I, I don't want to do it. I did yesterday. I don't want to do it again. Uh, but there are so many stocks and indi in indexes that are at potential D, E, or F highs. I think that we are very close to some kind of a some kind of a digestive phase. It might just be sideways. I'm not sure yet because that 9 over the 14 in all of these is still very strong. Okay, now let's go to gold. Gold's pulling back just a little bit. It's down 12 at 2054. This has got an alternate account D, I think it is. Uh, got a little reverse in the unbalanced volume, which is overbought, but 93% in the stochastic. MACD is good. 9 over the 14 is good. So this just says maybe a bit of a pullback, and that pullback occurs exactly when I go to, look at this, as a left side, right side price time match. I had, within the last two days, I had yesterday, probably as the, click right there. Yesterday is the day that I said, um, the test of the low that was made Mar of August the 30th, yep, August the 30th, a 102.94 will tell us whether or not there's going to be a bounce, which I was expecting in the Dow, in the dollar. And the dollar today is up 65 cents at 103.49. Not a big deal, but a big deal in comparison to where it was uh, two days ago, technically, where the doji candle allowed it to rally today. Dow's down up 20, 274, S&P's up five. I'll be right If back. you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Uh, yes, uh, thanks, Pat, uh, in the uh, Tiger YouTube. A uh, uh, lot of solar uh, storms today. Uh, not good for the market. Yeah, I, I, you know, coinciding, that's, of course, I think, Wolf Trader. Yeah, uh, that's good information. And uh, a couple of things I was going to do, I, I don't want to do them right now. I just want to, I need to go right here to the market. And um, 103.56 up 72 in the in the dollar. Now, look at look at the technicals that I have. I don't like messy charts. I know it looks like everything's messy. And this is starting to be really messy. So I'm, I use the dollar. We have been long the dollar since 2018. I want to remain long the dollar for now. <clears throat> I see no reason why we should do anything. We've taken some profits. The office still kept the core position. Um, it was at 90. It went all the way. It's gone to 120s and pulled back, back to 90. The U UUP, which we've owned, still held support, ran up again, went to 107.35 in the dollar in October of uh, this year. And then what happened is 107.35, you see these, first of all, you see this inside track, Chapman wave technique, inside track repellents, and look how the price is kept in this little inside little channel, mini channel. It turns out to be a proper big channel on the upside. Channel means two lines are parallel. So trend lines that are moving up. So it went there, it had a little doji candle on the on the third of October, and then it started to pull back. It held support. And then what I like to do is I like to take the dip. If I don't, if my eye sees, I love it when you can do it left side, right side, price, time match, the symmetry of that says that you can use the number of bars on the left side to the down or the up move curve, turn around, if you identify it correctly, to get the exact number of bars on the right side to go back to that level. I call it price symmetry or time price um, match. Now, what we've got here is this low. I like to use if I if I'm looking at it and I say, you know, I just I think it needs a lot more time. I'll use the cup. I have it. There are standard techniques that I use all the time. Um, I, I keep wanting to know if people are interested in these techniques because I, I, I would love. I just something I love to do. I love to do another all day webinar and we just look at charts throughout the day and I say what Chapman wave technique is applicable right now well this one was applicable you went to an E and the, the technicals look the, the stochastic was starting to fail the relative strength was starting to fail the um, on balance volume was really good but what happened was um, the, the type of technique that I use and especially the uh, 
with the UUP, let me just do the UUP because that was really what I was looking at. The UUP uh, gave a nice V-shaped, inverted V-shaped pattern in the on-balance volume. And that was a nice clue to say that you could turn around. So now let's go back to the chart, just showing you some of the, I usually, where, uh, Friday is a technical Friday. I do chap wave techniques, but this is applicable. Why? Because it's the dollar. It's really important. So you made a top and you started to make low lows and lower highs. And then there was a beautiful, so this up channel was the reversal point right there. It hit it exactly, turned around. So as it took out the support, Port level. That was the clue that this should be a bounce and give you a dreaded H pattern, a lowercase H pattern, which it did. And then it had a retest of the highs, but all the technical, the technicals here were just terrible. And then the nine period moving average crossed negative. So now I can get rid of all this stuff here because I've just this is the the channel that I used as support. It broke it. Let's get rid of it. I like cleaner cleaner charts than this. Right there, out. Out, out damn spot. All right. Uh, um, I'm even going to get rid of this up channel right here. It's just getting messy. And then what I did is I drew in from that. I have a technique called the Chapman Wave Inside Wedge Target Support or the Target Resistance Line. It's dash pink on the way down, dash green like over there, dash green on the way up. And I can even get rid of that, right? All right. <clears throat> and then what happened was... Um, we came down sharply, and I had drawn in from that low the price match, and I said that by the – this is the daily chart right here. Uh, by the – that's where it goes to. It says by the 29th of November, we should be testing 102. Well, we did it the day before, did it yesterday, and now we've turned around quite nicely. That doesn't mean to say, oh, my God, well, yeah, now we're moving. It just means this is the price turn. You've got the stochastic turning up. It's still terrible at 8%. You know how I like to say over 80% in the stochastics. Very positive. Under 10% under is very negative. So it's got a lot of work to do. The relative strength has moved up. The MACD histogram is starting to improve. And the nine-period moving average, the pink line is starting to flatten out. That's the nine. So there's a ton of way to go. To get this to cross positive, you'd have to go over the – the 200 period moving average of 104.20, you'd have to probably get close to the 50 period moving average, which is somewhere in the 104.80 area. A lot of work needs to be done. So that's all I'm saying right now. And here's another, this is the technique. I kept that in. I said this is going to be very important, this channel, this inside uh, right here. This this trend line right here, look, at it went from that high to that high, and it gave you that exact low. So that's that's important. Um, for a bounce, all right? And the monthly chart is still, the nine period is still over the 14, and that says, hey, there's still internal strength. And that just says, now look at the euro. The euro did exactly the opposite. It went to this uh, Chapman Wave technique, G slash C. Now, I normally say, <clears throat> a G slash C very often makes the cup formation, pulls back from G, but if there's still internal strength, you should see a D, and then be careful. Well, this is a G and it's pulling back sharply. It went right to the the 200 period moving average. I mean, just look at the times it's hit it and it's repelled at this 200 period moving average. So the euro says, and if you look at the monthly chart, it's not a great looking chart. It's an improving chart, but it's still pink with a nine period moving average negative. So this is a, a, a work in progress. And if you look at the USD JPY, this is the... Uh, Currency, the Japanese yen currency pair, nicer. He has the same technique. Chapman wave inside track repellent zone. I usually make this green right here because if it takes that out, that's really important. And I make this pink because this is the zone, the cell zone. Well, it hit the cell zone and it, re it got repelled at peak E, making lower lows. So the technicals are still very weak here. It's a lot of work to be done for the USD JPY to. To, to cross, look, the night in the weekly chart, I had said before, there's nothing wrong. It's still looking great, technically. So that's internal strength. And that kind of the trend of the of the yen and the dollar tend to go together, not in the same proportion, but they go together. Plus, you've got the large rectangle in my webinars. If, you, if you're a subscriber, you know, you can go to any one of my webinars. I've had a, a number of webinars on this, but the, one of them was called the, the difference between the large rectangle 
and the narrow rectangle. The large rectangle says you go to the flagpole high. This is 148.82 peak F in the monthly chart. Come tumbling down. And then if it starts to make high highs and higher lows, it should go to at least <clears throat> um, it, it should go to it could go to a D, but it'll be underneath, just underneath the target is always just under, right on or just above the previous high, and that was 148.82. The last high was 151 80, was it? 151. 90, 151.90. So it achieved everything and now it's having a bit of a pullback. So isn't that interesting? So we've got some kind of, uh, some kind of strength still in the yen. The dollar's pullback with the month, the week the chart is still okay. And the euro is just starting to pull back as the dollar's wrapped. And that corresponds to gold pull, pulling back. Uh, Dow's up 262, S&P's up two. I'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, let, let me just go through this. I had some questions. So the first question I, I wanted to deal with is, uh, do you think that uh, window dressing is preventing what should have been, what could have been a pullback today in the market? And I'm just going to say, um, it's so important that we've got some of those stocks that just got hammered, like Shopify, like uh, CRM, even Salesforce. I mean, so many of these stocks, and some of the, I mean, Shopify wasn't in the category of self Salesforce, which is just a monster in the uh, uh, in the uh, cloud. But at the same time, uh, the fact that it had such a good response 
uh, to earnings. And even though if you go deeper into it, maybe it shouldn't have had such a big response, but it was just maybe short covering, etc. But it is also the fact that you've got so one by one, you're starting to get these really important companies coming out with really good earnings. That to me is really important. So I, all I can say is that on a pure, how can I do this? Uh, let me just do this. AUD USD. This is Australian dollar. I believe I've got it right. Yeah. So the question is, can we look at the Australian dollar? I, since I was doing currencies, let me just do this. I'm going to come to all the questions in a moment. I just want to do this before we run out of time. So the Australian dollar. This pattern that I'm looking at in the monthly chart, look, I don't care about the notation. I'm just going to draw this in for you. If there, if you think of this as a trend line right there, think of this as an expanding trend line. But deep down, if you look at it, there really is a parallel move right here. Okay, I'm just getting rid of all the uh, all the extremes, and I'm just saying to you, there's your channel. There is a chance that the Australian dollar trading at 0.6614 right now, if it starts at any point in the next, I'd say. Probably by the first or second week of January, if it's trading above 0.698, I'd prefer to see it at 0 0.70. That's a big trend change. Right now, it's still in the lower lows and lower highs. But if you look at the weekly, it's so close to garnering a nine period moving average green crossover. The stochastic's at 70% and rising. The MACD's got a huge expansion between the nine period differential and the daily has gone from, has gone, I'll just do this real quickly. And I think it is important because we, we want to look at the currencies to see just how they impacting or being impacted today, especially with the dollar up. Uh, where have they been? Where are they going to? And in this particular instance, this is a peak E. It's almost like the, 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 um, the stocks that we're looking at, the the indices, where they've just gone to D or maybe an E, and now this 200 period moving average of point oh oh point eight six point oh point six six is going to be really important. So so far, the bank D is at, uh, strong. The nine period moving average is way above the 14. The 200 period moving average is like a magnet of point six five six. I like it. I think it's going to digest a little bit, and then it's going to move to the 6.670 area. That's the test. But most importantly, it has to hold 0 0.64. Uh, if I can read that, 46, 6 point, uh, 0 0.646, and that's going to be important uh, in the shorter term. I hope that helped you. Now, together with this, I want you to look at. Um, so, I think that. The, the, the lead is the Dow right now. And the Dow is acting so well, INDU, that, and it's in leg D, that on balance volume is a clue to me that it's getting a little bit toppy and there should be a pullback. But a pullback is not a major reversal, just a pullback. And from the way it's acting, this whole, this candle of the, right here, the candle in the Dow, of the 20th of November with a high of 35,227 and a low of 34,907. To me, in fact, let me just put this in. If there is going to be a pullback over the coming week and a half, I think it could even be two weeks, maybe into uh, the second end of the second week of January, uh, December. If there is a pullback, then what's really important, you've already done the one-to-one -one expansion, the Chapman falling axe formation. Any pullback says uh, stochastic at 81% in the um, weekly chart, point, uh, going to 78% is fine, going below 78%, I'd say be real careful. But any pullback says this could be a consolidation area. And that means you give you know, the two weeks, the last two weeks worth of action uh, gets taken back a breather and then we start moving higher. If it closes under 35, uh, sorry, 34,800 in the next week and off, and that means you're going to have to have bad news because right now we, there is no real bad news. There's a hint of, of news coming up, but this is what we always look at. Uh, this is the wrong chart. I wanted to show this for the uh, fabulous unbalanced volume turnarounds. So let me just do this here. Uh, wait, is this, how did I get to that chart? 
This is the one I wanted. Yeah, so this is where I'm just about, within. Uh, maybe by the end of the day, I'm going to be putting in a rectangle to say, just a little bit of a warning to say we're kind of overboard and there should be some digestive phase. And the, and the bad news will be it'll come from nowhere. It could be geopolitical. It could be uh, conflagration in the Middle East. It could be anything. Um, but in the meantime, we don't know what it is. And it could be yields. And I'm going to go to that in a moment, just uh, temporarily. But the strength of this move up says that any pullback should be moderate at this particular time. As the news, if there is bad news, as it accelerates, it'll ignore the, the kind of move that you've seen in Salesforce. And then the general, the, the overall stocks in the different sectors will be pulling back. So that's what I'm looking at. But the Dow right now is the leader. Uh, 36,952 was the all-time high. And here we are less than 1,000 points away from the all-time high. That is really important. Another question came in. Could I look at... Was it the XOP? Oh, I can't find now what the question was. Let me put the XOP. I think it was the XOP. No, no, it wasn't. Ooh, am I going to find this? Uh-oh, trouble. Uh, the question, the question that could ask me again, I think it was generally about the oil stocks. I'm having a little problem here. I want to do this before we run out of time. Oh, I can't find it right now. Um, Oh, Basil looking at DIA puts here. Um, I don't know if the diamonds are the best one to be looking at the puts. I, I think the QQQ or the or the uh, S&P. You know what? I, I just need to see. The day is young. I need to see how the day uh, uh, falls down. I wouldn't even necessarily be in a rush because if you're looking at puts, um, 100 points in the Dow is not going to make a difference because if you're looking at puts, we want a pretty decent. Today is up 270, so you have to give back about three or 400 to really get the benefit there. Let me think about that for the moment. I do see the Dow coming down. I just, uh, you know, uh, it, it's a question of how does it go down. The, um, the diamonds are at 357. I can see them getting to the 352s, maybe even 350 is if there's a sharp pullback. So I've answered a couple of questions. Oh, was it the oil? Oh, if you could just type it in again. Um, yes, uh, spoken Bob. I'll have a look at that. Yeah, I, I'm going to try to find it, but what the question was. Let me see if I can get there. Oh, you know what I'll do. I'll do it during the break. We've got a break coming up. The Dow's giving back a little bit. It's up to 68. S&P's now down uh, two again. And I, I will talk about the two-click session. I haven't had a chance yet. I will do that as well as... Uh, looking, I'll find that in a moment, what the question was. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So the question was, uh, is oil, oil and gas, is it starting to look a little bit better now? So I'm looking at the Spider Oil and Gas Exploration Fund, that is the XOP. <clears throat> it's stuck on the 200 period moving average. You can be, it's like glue. We watched that yesterday. I think it was 45, 76 or 75, somewhere around there. Uh, how the, how the uh, I can find it. I don't want to waste time right now. But it was like glue. <clears throat> For the E mini, that's the E mini. It just kept coming there, no matter what happened, up and down, got locked in. <clears throat> so what we're looking at right now is the 200 period moving average. I I don't see anything just yet. I would wait. I'd rather see. I'd rather be buying strength rather than sideways or weakness. So at this point, I'd do nothing. I'd I'd give up a couple of points, and if I can see. That is trading the weekly chart is flipped to negative and the nine period moving average. If this can get to the 143 area, maybe then let's look at it. Because if it goes to 133, that means it's um, it's trying to get to this very ugly candle of the 6th of November with a high of 148 and a low of 142. So it can, it can at least try to get into that. So 143, I just wait. Right now, that's all I can say. I wouldn't short, I wouldn't go long, I just wait. Um, next question is, where did it go? Um, I add to the position. Oh, um, Ron says, uh, cheers, Basil. Hi, I wanted your uh, take on RYCEY. I got in at $1.50 and it's had a good run. I'm looking to putting in a stop at two fifty. How much further do you think uh, this could run? And should I add to the position? So R, I did this yes was it yesterday or the day before? So this is R uh, Y C E F is the one that I'm looking at. You're looking at the Y. Oh gee, I've done the work on the on the F. R Y C E Y. Yes, I thought they looked the same. I can't, I think maybe one is a trading vehicle and the other isn't. I'm surprised over all the years, every time I've mentioned this, <clears throat> no one has said that they've owned it. And I've used, used it <clears throat> because it's Rolls-Royce. But you remember Rolls-Royce is really the Rolls-Royce engines. Uh, Rolls-Royce itself is that, I think it's owned by BMW. <clears throat> but Rolls-Royce itself make cars unbelievable. We had, a, um, I was sent by one of my subscribers, um, a picture of the Rolls Royce, uh, the two seater convertible. It just, it's really, this is the first time they're really good looking. I've never liked them. The Bentleys look way better. But anyway, and they've changed the grill. The grill always upset me. That straight up grill, it was, it was kind of a, kind of a loof setting way back in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, even the 60s, but it just got outdated. So yeah, this is a leg D. <clears throat> so you're in. Oh, I have to go back now. R Y C E Y. It's this. Oh, this one is trading. I just typed in the wrong at three forty-two, and I think it's the same price. But I must check. R Y C. I want to go apples to apples. 
why am I type? Oh, I did the same thing again. R Y C E Y. Okay, this one's at three thirty-seven. So the question is, I would not add right now. Um, if you're thinking of adding, and if you're going to put a stop at two fifty, <clears throat> oh, absolutely. I'd even say a stop at. Uh, I'd split that. I'd have your two fifty. I'd also have part of that position at two. 68 or maybe 272. Why? Because if it comes that far down, it's going to go a lot lower. So that's number one. Number two is I wouldn't add to it. But if you ask me the question, I'm going to say to you, why not take a little bit off and try to put that little bit back and you'd have a nice percentage gain if you take that off and you put it back in the middle of the gap. And it's oh, trades overseas, so the gap doesn't mean the same as it does if it's, a, let's say, an American stock trading on the American market during regular hours. So 312, probably being a little more aggressive, I uh, know, less aggressive. And I'd say, give me a yell. If you see it at 312, and we'll do some analysis. See the 314 is the 200-period moving average uh, magnet line. It's gone above that. I think it will be pulling back, and it could stick around this magnet line for a little while. So that's my, if you want my recommendation, take a little bit off, and that's the little bit you'll put back on a sharp pullback, but it has to go below the 28th low uh, of 3.21. So I would prefer down into the three teens. So let's leave it at that. I hope that helps you. Um, and that, that's where I would add that back. And I would even say if everything works out with the general market pulling back and then we're getting close to another trigger for the buy mode to the upside, um, extension, uh, that's where I, it's participating exactly with the Dow. Look, it made it slow. Actually, it made it slow more on the 23rd of October. It anticipated. Remember, I put this together the other day with race, which is the Ferrari, which is pulling back from a peak D. Remember, this is how these peak Ds work sometimes. Chap wave instant restart goes to a second buy mode, another peak D. So, um, yeah, so that's what I'm saying there. Now, a couple of questions that I, I need to get you right now. So a question came in. CCJ, could I look at the uranium stocks? So CC, CCJ did that peak G slash C, and it's almost like it's gone C1, C2. It's still got a little strength, and it looks to me like it really wants to just nick the 46 level. It's trading at 44.89 right now, holding very nicely. The weekly chart's still holding well. URN, um, UR, uranium, URNM is a uranium ETF. Uh, it's pulled back much sharper. And you remember, I said, I like our position in UEC, which we're in from 364. And here it is at 637. And it's got that peak F. And look, the 9 is holding well above the 14. The MACD's just slipped a little negative. Stochastic's still at 80%. This is my favorite uh, out of all of them, because 660, the left side, half April of 2022, that's kind of my target. And then we have to reassess what happens if it uh, double tops there. So, yeah, the CCJ is still acting well. And I do think there's enough strength to try a little higher. And I'm thinking that this is the surprise in our portfolios. Every year we have something that is kind of a low, low price stock. And it just keeps going and going and going. I don't know if this is one of those. But the 9 on the 14 in the weekly chart, look, it hasn't shown a single hint of turning down. So price has to do that before it can turn down. So, so far, I'm, I'm kind of impressed. Um, I'm, I'm not impressed that we didn't add to our position on the little bits we've taken off. But I, I like this action very much. So yes, I think it's going high. Next question was, I wrote it down. Um, could I do uh, the uh, seven? I, I can't do them all right now. So let's just go to our long that we've got, Microsoft from 338. <clears throat> It hit 384.30 yesterday and then pulled back quite sharply, actually, and it's down today. And this is, to me, a hint that the general market could be having a little bit of a pullback here because this has been the leader in the Dow. Now, of course, you've got CRM, which has ta taken over the leadership role. I think CRM is going to give back a huge chunk of this big gain that it's had today from the 252 high. It's already at 244. I think a 240 area, 241 to 238 is going to be the big test. Can it hold the game? So far, it's leg C in the monthly. That's a big deal. Uh, other question came in with Apple. Apple is digesting gains. It went to a peak effort, 192.93. Um, it's down just a little bit. But it, here again, 
It's just a slow digestive phase. And that's it. I'll be back in a moment on SMH is full. Yeah, SMH is a star to score. That's another clue to me that this getting a little toppy here. That's why we started a short position in one of the indices. Obviously. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the newsletters tab on the front page of tfnn.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Oh my, I just saw, and I had this as the first thing I was going to talk about, and I just kind of overlooked it. VGZ, the question is, uh, VG, VGZ, I'm holding this as an option. And that's the only way I would play VGZ. It's just been horrible. Uh, VGZ is a uh, Vista Gold Corporation. I mean, this has gone to the 200-period moving average back in April, weekly chart in the point uh, 70s, and it just continued down to the point 30 area, and now it's had a really good move to the point 40, and it's trading at this point at point 38. Yes, that's the only way I would treat this one. The other gold stocks completely separate. Uh, on any big dips, I'd be looking at them, uh, wanting to buy if you haven't got in already. Most importantly. Uh, VGZ is just, if it acts this bad, there's just something not quite right. And a big move up, maybe things are repaired. So just treat it as an option. There's no other way I would do it. I can't even give you support resistance levels. I can just say that if it can close over 0.48 at any point in the next uh, three days, that would be the first really good sign that I'm seeing a follow through to the upside. Next question was, uh, what about the, uh, <clears throat> what about the, um, 
Uh, E-mini, you spoke about the two-click session. Yeah. So I, you look at the, this one-minute chart. Look how it got hit, the 200-period moving, and got repelled every single time. So the two-click two session is, and I'll talk about it more tomorrow, is if early in the morning, it could be after, it could be 6.30 in the morning, it could be after the 8.30 news. If you can go long or short, thinking, you know, I'm going to go long here. I'll put in a stop. You're going to work out what your stop is. And if as soon as it starts to work, you raise your stop to a break-even trade. And if you have more than one position, that's great. But if you've got one, that's fine. And what happens is if you've identified it correctly, and I can tell you about six to seven sessions a month have been single, uh, just two-click trades. Either you get the low or you get the high, mostly the lows. And it just goes all the way until mid-afternoon or even the close. And then you close it out. You just don't even look at it. You just put in your stop and let it do. So the short would have been up at the four. And if you would have got it to the four, I was in the 40, 46 day for a, one of the positions. But And you could just hold it and keep lowering your stop if you've got more than one. And you let it and you just don't worry about it until the end of the day. And that's 